Welcome back to Unraveled Game Thoughts. <clears throat> Today I have Masters of Renaissance. Thank you, Justin from Tyler, who uh, gave me this game when I was down visiting another friend. And I have gotten a chance to try it out and kind of figure out the rules and wanted to share this today. So I'm just going to teach the game, show you how it works, and let me know what your thoughts are. If you've played this, if you have played it with others, I have not actually played it with another human being. I'm going to kind of two-hand a little bit, but not a full game. Just enough so you can kind of get an idea of <clears throat> how this one works. So what we're looking at here is uh, a game that is called Lorenzo Il Magnifico, the card game. The Masters of Renaissance, I'll hold it up to the thing. So if you're familiar with Lorenzo Il Magnifico, then some of this is going to seem familiar. Most likely just some of the iconography, things of that nature. It doesn't play exactly like Lorenzo Il Magnifico because this is described as a card game. Now, these are largely the cards in the game, and then you have four leader cards that I will get into. But uh, as you can see, there's other components here. We have some uh, marbles and a little cute tray for those to go in. We have some other components here. They're just sitting on the back. There's two other player boards, so it's up to a four-player game, and there's a solo version. But it comes with this plastic <clears throat> container here that has the resources in the game. So what we have are, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, gold, we have stone, uh, merchants, and shields. I'll try to hold these up so you can kind of see. Uh, these are just wooden, little wooden pieces. That's the gold. That is the stone. This is the merchant. And can't quite see it. There you go. And then we have the shields. So... These are not bad components for, uh, I, I actually don't know uh, what the going value of the game is. For kicks and giggles, uh, 20 bucks on Game Nerds. So there's a couple other sites where it's more, but right now you could get this for 20 bucks on Game Nerds. And maybe there's other places that it's around uh, that value. So bearing that in mind, as you're looking at these components and parts and pieces, that might factor in. Whether or not this is a game you'd be interested in looking for, and I'll try to put a link to Game Nerds in the description when I get this posted. So, we have those resources, and then we have these marbles here, and what they, when you're taking the action of gathering resources, you're going to either take resources from a row, one of the three rows, or one of the four columns, and then that's going to get you those resources, and then this marble that kind of goes down in this little, it just rolls around in a tray to the bottom, it's going to go in from either this side or this side, and it's going to push another marble down into that tray. Um, the resources are the purple marbles will get you merchants. The blue marbles will get you shields. The gray marbles will get you stone. The yellow will get you gold. And the red will get you faith, which I will explain in a bit. Uh, there's a nice little aid down here. White generally gets you nothing, although... When I explain the leader cards, you'll see that sometimes white could give you something in certain situations. And we have our array of cards, a uh, three by four grid. You have your level one cards, level two cards, level three cards, and then you have green, blue, purple, or yellow, and purple. Uh, those colors don't necessarily align with the resources in any way. They're just different colors of cards, which will come into play when it comes to uh, how you can get your leader out, and I'll explain that in a bit. And you have your player board. So the player board has a faith track at the top, and that is uh, a significant component of the game. It's actually one of the game enders, potentially, is if someone gets to the end of the faith track, we finish the round, game, game is over. Um, then you have your storage, and you have one, two, three slots for storage, and then you have a storage box at the bottom. So when you produce goods in this game, they go to a storage box. When you gain goods, then they go to your storage area here, and there are some rules for that that I'll explain. And then you have three columns here in which you can put cards that you obtain, 
and then I'll explain how the rules work for that as well. We start the game with four leader cards, and you're going to pick two of these, and then you're going to uh, discard the other two to the um, basically out of the game. And so you'll have two that you can work toward during the game, and I'll, I'll explain that as well. So those are <clears throat> the components of the game. What we're ultimately trying to do is get the most points, because that's what we do in games, really, right? It's the most points, just about every time. Um, you're going to obtain points from these cards, which at the bottom of each of these cards is a point value. The first level one cards are anywhere, it looks like, from two to four points. Uh, the middle row, it looks like from five to seven points. And then here at the bottom row, I'm guessing it's going to be about eight to ten points. Maybe there's an 11. I can't remember from the my first run through. Um, but the higher the level, the more points you have. Uh, you also are going to get points for however far you got on the faith track, which if you ended the game and your marker, you have a little cross marker here. I'll hold that up so you can see it. That's, that's what you're using to track your faith at the top. And say it gets to this point by the end of the game, then you would gain 12 points because that's the last point value you passed. So that is points from cards, points from this. And then if you happen to have obtained these when the Vatican does their Inquisition, or uh, I forget what it's called, a uh, they do some kind of a report. Maybe it's just called the Vatican Report. Uh, let's look here. The Vatican Report. And whenever they do the report, uh, if your faith marker is at least in the section that triggered the report, then you'll get to keep those points. If your faith marker is not yet in that section or past it, then you will lose those points at the end of the game. So you've got, let's see, two, five, uh, nine. Total of nine points that could potentially be obtained via Vatican reports. Those only trigger if a player triggers one of or these three uh, Vatican reports, which means someone has to make it to the end of the track for that one to be triggered. That is where the points come from. Your leader will also potentially have some points. Yeah, all the leaders have some points. Looks like from three to five here, uh, this one, two, seven, eight, nine, four. So just various point levels. I think it depends largely on how difficult that leader is to get into play. Probably the more difficult, the less resources it gives, the more points you'll get in the game. Uh, and the ones that are fewer points probably help you more during the game. So this game only has three actions. That's it, just three actions. You're either going to gather resources, you are going to purchase a card, or you're going to uh, trigger the things that you have, you're going to produce. So the cards that are showing at the top are going to produce resources that go into your storage box. That's the three actions you have in the game. Now, if you have met the requirements for one of your leaders, you can also put one of those in play. That is additionally on top of all the other actions you might uh, be taking, uh, and which, which which on a given turn, one action on a given turn, and then if you can get a leader in play, you'll do that. So that's it. It's pretty simple. Um, the way that production works is when you have these cards on your board, say I have this card and it's my top card, then I could pay, if I'm producing, I can give up a gold and a shield. Try to hold this up here. Hopefully that's at camera, in the camera area. A gold and a shield and then I will get two merchants, two stone, and a faith. Whenever, I think I, I don't know if I said this earlier or not, but whenever I gain faith I just move my faith marker up on this track based on how many faith I gain. So that is it. So let's let's start with the very first thing in the game that each player is going to do. I'm going to look at these leader cards and there's no real, uh, the only real starting uh, thing you might be looking at at the beginning of the game to figure out what leader should I choose. Uh, your leaders might be a primary thing you would choose. I guess you might look out on here and just see what's available as far as the cards that are at the top of the pile because when you purchase a card, you have to purchase from the face-up card 
that's at the top of the pile. When a pile runs out, you can no longer purchase cards from that area. So if I look at my leaders here, we'll just look at what each one does. This one will allow my the white marbles to actually be merchants. So that's a good resource leader. I would need to obtain, he'd be five points at the end of the game, I would need to obtain two uh, level one, what do you call it, um, uh, production cards, and I would need to obtain one level two blue. So two yellows and one blue, all level one, because there's no dots in here to indicate they have to be higher level. So this one is, I can pay a merchant to get any one good and a faith, and that would cost me at least one, I'll have to have at least one level two. It won't cost me. I don't pay that card. I just have to have it. This one, if I have five merchants in my supply, then three points and I get extra storage. I'll explain the storage in a second. This one, I have two, if I have two green and one purple, I can get five points and all my whites are worth shields. So looking at these cards, I could go heavy and say, you know what, let's make the whites all either worth merchants or shields, which would give me a little flexibility if I was able to get both of these in play. Uh, however, uh, one of them requires one thing. I would have to get one, two, three, four, five, six different things available on my board to get both of these in play. It might be pretty tough. I'd be better off probably trying to figure out a way to align these so that I'm kind of moving in the same direction uh, with them. Uh, this one, I mean, that leader gives me merchants with the white ones. This, I can use merchants to get that in faith. I kind of like these two. I feel like they work well together because this resource uh, gathering ability would give me that resource gathering ability. Now, an important thing with resources, well, I should say it this way. I can't, so this is not a production card. This is when I'm gathering resources, the white ones can be merchants. This is a production card. When, I'm, when I produce, I can turn the mer one merchant into any other good and a faith. So it gives me a little bit of flexibility and resources, but I would be using two separate actions when each of these would trigger, which is probably not uh, unhelpful. So I'm going to pick those two for my left board here. For my right board, what do we got? Um, so we've got a, a yellow and a green. And what this leader will do, it's two points, but every card that requires a merchant to purchase will cost me one less merchant. Not bad. Um, it's not a lot of points. And it's not a whole lot. This, this nun will give me seven points if I have 14 faith, when I have 14 faith and can play her. Uh, this one, if I have one of each, uh, yellow, green, blue, and purple, eight points. That one's not bad. And this one, a green level two, at least one of them, four points, but every gold will give me a resource and a faith, huh? That is a tough choice. So these kind of go together. Um, makes my merchant cards... I got, let's see, there's there's a few face-ups that cost a merchant there. Um, trying to decide if I think that production is going to be helpful. Eight points outright, not bad. I like that as well. I think I like the idea of going after these two because this helps me with faith, which is good to get some help with. And that is one of anything. So I'm going to go ahead and use the, I'm going to say those two are going to be my leader cards. I'm putting them up here right now so I know they're not played, but I'll put them beside the board when they're played. There's not necessarily a place you have to put them. And now we're ready to start. So I've given the left board here the first player token. That never changes. That stays with that player. And then when the game is the game end is triggered, you're going to finish a round so all players get an equal number of turns. Um, now, first player does not start with anything. Board two, or second player, will get at least one resource of their choice. They don't pick it from here. They're just going to pick any resource they want. Um, he's going to be trying to go after these leaders. So he's kind of going to look up here and see what are these level one cards that might be worth obtaining that could also facilitate the getting the leaders out a little faster. 
just sometimes that's kind of the meaty decision. And I like things that tend to give me multiple resources. I think those are pretty, pretty good. So I'm going to go for a stone and see if that plays to my favor. Now, now that I've got one resource, I'm going to explain how the storage works. The storage is a little bit, it's a little tricky. Um, I mean, once you kind of get it, you get it, but it's tricky at first because you can never store the same good in two different storage locations. Not counting the strong box. Take the strong box out of it. That doesn't count for this. Just these three areas. And you can also never store the same two different goods in the same level of your storage. So I have one stone, so I'm just going to put it in the first. You can rearrange it however much you want. As you, as you need to, but we, we might see during a couple plays of the game here how sometimes you have to just lose an item because you don't have enough places to store it. So you really have to kind of pick something to go after and you want to stick with it. You can't really gather enough resources at the start of the game to go after multiple things. So I started the stone. I'm going after that. Left-hand player probably sees my board and knows, hey, he's going after stone. So that's just something to be to bear in mind when it comes to like what are other players doing and you're trying to thwart them or you want to get in their way or do you want to just kind of go after your own thing so he's starting with that if there was a third player they would get one resource and a faith and if there was a fourth player they would get two resources and a faith so if you get up to um, three things if you're the the fourth player all right so beginning with first player Let's see, he is wanting to go after um, a, uh, wants to go after that yellow, needs a blue, that stone. If, if, if he goes after stone, uh, he would have to beat player two or board two for stone. So now if I'm taking resources, I either have to take a row or a column, and there's no way I'm going to get two stone in one row or one column. So, and that will also put the single faith marble back on the board, which might give my opponent the ability to get that. So that's, uh, which is, it's going to happen anyway, actually. If I get any resources, that is going to happen. So I might be better going after a blue first, especially since I have to get a, a level one and a level two blue at some point. I might as well shoot for the level one and see where that goes. So... Let's see, we're going to need some gold, we're going to need some merchants, and in neither situation do I have the ability to get both gold and merchants. So that kind of, I don't like that, but if I can get a gold and a merchant, that's pretty good. Now here I can get a, a merchant, a gold, and a shield. Here I would get a, um, a gold, uh, a stone, and a merchant. I think I kind of like the idea of gold, stone, and merchant because I push that over and that will roll down because gold, stone, and merchant, uh, I'm going to need stone to eventually get a yellow regardless of if I'm going to get that yellow or not. And so I'm going to go ahead and do this. I am probably going to end up just getting the one um, stone for now. And then I'll have to get a merchant and a gold uh, later. So that is my turn. I gathered resources, passing on to board two. All right. So we're going to go after, I mean, we're really going to go after this, uh, this stone here and get it to where we can get that card. So whoops, I did not put it in the right one. Let's go here. That would just give a merchant. We're going to go here so we get two stone. We don't have anything that would help our white be worth anything, so that's not going to change. But now I'm going to move my stone down to the level three so that I have all three of the stone that I need there. And now play passes to board one. All right. Board one. He is still needing a merchant. And, and actually, this is perfect. He's going to gather resources. He's going to go here. And he's going to get a gold, a merchant, and a faith. That actually works out perfectly for board one because he needed one gold, one merchant, and the faith doesn't have to be stored anywhere. He just gets to move that up on his board, which is fantastic. And now he'll have enough to buy a card next round. All right. Board two is going to pay his three resources. 
and purchase this card. And so the way these work, you can only ever put a level one card in an empty slot. And then you can only ever put a level two card on a level one card. I think you can put level, uh, I was going to say, I think you can put level two cards onto, uh, you can put level one cards on level one cards, but I don't think that's true. I think you actually have to have uh, a level two on a level one. So if you're trying to fulfill, say, this order, you're not going to be able to fulfill this order with four level ones because you can't put a level one on a level one. You just need one of each color card, but one of those is going to have to be a level two. That's just how it's going to have to work. So uh, he's got this card. It does nothing right away. It just means three points at the end of the game for sure. And uh, now two shields during production can produce a gold and a, let me hold this up, a gold and a merchant and a stone. So he's got a little bit of production activity going back to board one. All right. He is also going to purchase his card that he wants, which is a level one blue. So now during production, a shield and a stone will produce two merchants and a faith. Not a bad card to have. We're going to put that there. That's his turn. Play passes the board too. As you can see, it's a pretty fast back and forth. Turns don't take too long. Really, it's just thinking about, well, how can I build up my, my tableau faster than my opponent? and get the edge to where I can can play some of these other cards. Now, this one, this one's a really good one to get, uh, and, and I'm going to need shields to get it, but I, shields are also a production thing on my board. So it's a tough choice. Um, I could go after this one and try to get more shields producing, or this one, where I can turn gold in the shields, which could be helpful as well. But getting a, a level one green so that I can eventually get my level two green might be the most beneficial for me um, because then I can turn merchants in the shields. So I think I might go after shields. Um, hmm. That is a tough one, but I can't get two shields here, which is kind of what I would prefer to do um, but that's not going to happen so at least keeping up with my opponent and faith might be the most beneficial so I'm going to go here to get a gold a uh, oh, I guess I'm throwing these all over in my thing there a gold I'm going to get one faith and a gold and a shield and I'll just put those in my storage not my storage rather we yeah, have my storage but my not my strong box. All right, board one is going to go, and he now has the capacity to turn that into merchants. Needs a yellow, needs a blue. Level two. But the blue level one is pretty good as well. So he might not, might want to get another blue level one so that when he produces. Uh, it will produce, he won't lose producing this faith during production. And then a blue level two here would also produce two faith. So we could create a nice little engine producing faith. And this is not a bad card, that blue one. So tough choice, but we could get a leader in play pretty quick. Problem is we have to get a level one blue down here and then cover it with a level two before we can actually really get things going. Um, I already have that. Can I get a merchant and a gold? I can. I think I'm going to. I'm going to go merchant and gold and put those down here and then pass play to board two. All right. What is board two going to try to do here? We don't have two shields to produce. We're really wanting the shields. Um, I think, I think we're going to go uh, two shields and stone. I think that's what we're going to do because that's going to get us to our card. So the stone will go up top and my two shields have to go in the third, the third section here and then play passes the board one. 
All right, board one is gonna go ahead and pay a gold, a stone, and a merchant. And he's gonna purchase this level one blue card and put it here. Now, the other game end rule, I didn't explain this, but uh, getting one of the players getting to the end of the faith track is one way to end the game. <clears throat> the other game ending trigger is when a player has seven cards on their tableau. When that happens, that is also going to trigger the end game. Those are the two end game options. And so that's what you kind of have to watch for if you're playing uh, with other players. There is a solo option for this game that uh, I don't know if I'll do a video for or not. I'll probably try it out and we'll see. But uh, I'm not sure if I'll do a video unless I get a, a request in the comments or something. And somebody really wants to see the solo, then I'll do it. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'll just uh, find another time to do it. Um, so we just played that card. That is it. And now we're going to go over to board two. I believe we have enough for our green level one. So we're going to play those three resources, get green level one, and place that there. And then move over here to board one. Now I'm in a position where I have some production options. I really want to go after this level two, which takes five gold. Nothing I have here produces gold. So I'm probably going to have to get something that produces gold in order to get up to that level two. I don't even see anything on the board that produces gold except for level two stuff. So that puts me in a little bit of a tricky situation. I can get faith here. Having a merchant for some production might not be bad. Probably need to get some stuff in my storage box and start building up. Um, I've got, I need a yellow card um, to work toward that ability. Man, this is pretty, this is pretty tough. So do I want to go after the stone and the, I think I'm going to go after the stone and the shields because if I go get that resource, then I get one stone and two shields. And that's pretty helpful to me in the immediate future as far as getting a yellow card. So I'm going to do that. All right, now, player two. I know player one's not going to be getting a card next turn unless he's going after the green. Uh, I don't know his leader card, so he could be going after green. Um, what I need to go after, what player two needs to go after here is getting that level two green. He's got the level one green. He needs a level two green. That's going to take three shields and two merchants. Will we produce, produce shields and merchants via those actions? And might even get some options for producing some other things. But let's see. Do we want to try to go after a blue? Um, this is pretty tough let's see i think we're kind of probably going to go after that green we've got these but we can probably get two and two i don't like the options here i need to produce and one of the things you can do when you produce is give up two resources for any one other resource so we may end up having to do that i don't like it but I think I'm going to end up getting a different card, and what I'm going to do is go here, and I'm going to get a gold, a stone, and a faith, because moving the faith up is pretty helpful. So I'm going to rearrange these so I have that there, and I'm not sure what I'm going to get yet, but we're going to hold off for it. So uh, we are still going after that yellow. I need at least another stone. I could produce... But I don't have another merchant here, so I'm not likely to want to produce just yet. Um, although, I do like the idea of maybe building up toward a production action. Um, I don't want to waste resources. That's kind of my biggest concern. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to restore that there. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and keep my faith going too. We'll get a shield, a merchant and a faith so we don't get behind on the faith track 
and that gives me those. And then board two is going to go. And what does he want to do? Does he have what he wants to buy something? He doesn't know what he wants to buy. He just knows he wants to produce. He wants to be able to produce gold. Or maybe it's this one that needs to produce gold. I can't remember. One of them needs to produce gold. I think we're trying to get this, this five gold here. Uh, here. And we need to get something that gets us gold. So we kind of need player two to buy a card eventually. But he doesn't know what he wants to buy yet. He doesn't want to lose resources. And right now, based on what he has, it's not great for resources. Gold I can get. I don't want to get a stone. Getting a merchant wouldn't be terrible. Um, I'm just not going to be able to produce what I want to produce, but I could go after, I could go the, do this. I'll go do this and I'll get a faith, a merchant and a gold, and then I won't lose any, uh, I won't be losing any resources and I will get one faith. So right now, if the game ended, I'd get one point from my faith. So board one is going to go. And what was I going to do with board one? I think I'm going to, I'm going to do a production action. That's what I'm going to do. So for production, I can do all three of these things, but I need to have the values right up front. So I've got a shield and a stone for this card, and we have a, a merchant for this card. And I'm sorry if my hat is covering part of the board here. I'll try to scoot these up just slightly, see if that helps. Um, hopefully that works. So I'm gonna pay those resources. And then I'm going to get these resources here. So card one is going to give me two merchants and a faith. And card two will give me a stone. And all of these things that are produced go into my storage box rather than up here. Now, I could also do this one, which I could give up these two shields to get any one other resource. So the question I have to ask myself is, do I want to do that? Um, is there a card that I'm looking for that doesn't require shields? Well, I, this card, this yellow card, I'm kind of going after. So I would use two shields for that. The other thing I'm trying to get is enough gold to get a level two, but I have no place to store five gold. So I have got to get a card that will allow me to store gold. Um, so this one will work, but I would need five merchants. Well, I can build up toward five merchants and maybe go after that card, but I would need a level one in order to build this level two. So you're kind of seeing some of the tight decision making that it takes to, uh, to go here uh, to figure out what, what do I want to go after. Well, I think I'm still going to go after that level one yellow um, for now. And, and I'm making a mistake. I keep thinking that I have to play the purple yellow twos on the on the on the level ones. You can put a level two card on any color card. It does not have to be the same color that you put it on top of. You're just covering up that other ability. So I can put any level two card. So I could go after this level two card to put it on top of this one, which is actually probably what I'm going to do, which means that do I want to gather resources so that I can get more merchants? I would need stone to do that, which is not bad. I think I'm going to. I'm going to go throw this down here and get two stone and a coin. And I'll put my coin there and that so that we can at least produce a little bit next round. We'll see what happens. So board two is going to go. My goal here is to kind of play until I got a leader or two in play, and then you kind of see how it works with the leaders and maybe get uh, one of these faith inquisitions to trigger uh, or the Vatican reports, and you'll kind of see how that works. And then that will be the Vatican. That's all the mechanics in the game. It's As I said, it's a very, I'd say a light Euro game. Definitely has a Euro feel to it, uh, but uh, it's not heavy and thick like a lot of Euros. It's pretty pretty tight, uh, easy mechanics to run. All right, what are we doing here? We've got a full warehouse, so we're either going to produce, which we don't have enough to produce, or we're going to have to get something uh, from the board here. And I think what I decided I was going to do was pay these three gold 
to get this blue card because now I have obtained three of the colors and all I'm lacking is purple. And we are closer to potentially being able to produce. So back over to board one. Um, we've got two blue. We're really going after this level two here so we can start producing gold. So we need to make merchants. And I think we are going to produce because if we do this, we can get rid of a uh, one of those. You can only produce once per. Uh, then we get this, and we'll move that up one faith, and that gives us a merchant. And then we'll go ahead and turn in uh, two of these, which I'm basically giving up for, for some production, but I'm going to get my fifth merchant here in my storage box, uh, which will help me later. So, board two, coming back over here, we really want to get a purple card, uh, and we can't get another level one card because all of our level ones are full, so we're going to have to do something to, um, to get level two cards out here. And we want a purple level two. We see he has five merchants, so we know he's probably going after that, so we don't know. We know that the next purple level two is probably going to take some merchants. So we're going to have to do some production here. We just have to figure out how to do it the best way possible. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and gather resources and get two merchants and a shield because I can safely do that without losing any resources. I'll move my merchants to level three and I'll put my shield up there and then I'm good. So Player one is going to take his five merchants to storage, pay them, and get this level two card, which he has to put it on something. Well, he's going to put it on here because not only does it give him the gold that he's looking for uh, in order to get a level two blue, <clears throat> it also gives him a faith when he produces. So with three stone and a shield, I can produce some pretty valuable stuff. Uh, I'm not going to need that, but that's okay. I am not going to worry about that for right now. All right. Board two. What do we want to do? Um, hmm. We really want to go after a purple. We would need three merchants and two gold. We have a full array of stuff here. I think we're going to produce. So with production, we're going to pay two for that one. And we're going to pay two for that one. And I don't think any of these could have given us a level two card. Yeah, we couldn't have gotten one. So we're producing on those two for sure. And that's going to go to our storage box. So we're going to get a, a gold, a shield, and a stone for that one card. And then we're going to get a gold, a merchant, and a shield for the second card. And the question is, do I want to also use uh, this, per this activity to turn these two into something else? Uh, I could do that. I can only purchase level two stuff now. So I would need to turn it into something pretty useful. I need another merchant here. That merchant I could actually use. So I think I'm going to hold for now because I could probably get a merchant from, from this area instead of giving up two of these and, and save my shield. We'll see how it works. So going back to player one, let's see what we can do here. Hmm. We've got some pretty good stuff. We really want to, you know, three, three stone and a shield gives us some pretty good production. Uh, we really want to get our level two, but we've got room for one more level one here, which would be pretty handy. Um, I like that. That takes a stone. We need a yellow. So we need some more stone and some more shield. We don't have a way to get two stone. Hmm. Ah, getting that level two would be good. This is not unhandy for uh, a few turns if I can, if I can nab it. Uh, that would not be a bad one. If I can get a merchant and a shield, I could also nab this. But that's not nearly as helpful. 
it just gives me a level one onto which I can put a level two. But it doesn't help me make coins. That one helps me make coins. Hello. Oh, nothing, none of, none of the options here are very good because I can't get two stone, which is what I'd really want. Getting a shield is not bad, but I think I'm going to get a shield and a merchant. I think that's what I'm going to do. And that's going to help me at least potentially get a level one that I can build a level two on. So we'll do that. Store those in three areas. Done. All right. Player two. What do we want to do? Um, we need a level two green, which means we need three shields and two merchants. We actually have three shields and two merchants. So let's play, pay those and get this level two, which has to go on a level one. So the question is really, which of these do we are we okay covering? What are we going to try to get? Well, we're going to have to be producing merchants. Probably don't want to cover that. This produces shields and stone, which we use there. Um, Oh man, I'm not sure which one I like the best. Uh, I'd probably say the merchants is what we need the most, so we're going to cover this one up and see how that works for us. That gives us a level two, so now this, this leader card comes into play. That is officially a thing that we can use his production activity. we got four points at the end of the game, and because we had a level two green, we get to bring him in play automatically, and we can now pay a gold to gain one of any resource and a faith. So, not bad. All right. Player two, getting getting close, getting close. Still need two yellows. That's unfortunate. We need a level two blue. We're gonna have to get one. Uh, we're just gonna go hard after that level one card um, because we wanna cover it up and get a level two. So we're gonna pay and get that. And then back to player two. Let's see. Um, hmm. some tough choices. Now, we, we can't put any more level ones down. We're going after level three or we're going after level two. And what we really need is a purple. Uh, and it's going to have to be a purple level two. So, um, I think what we're going to go after is merchants. We need merchants. We need gold. We have the gold. We just need the merchants. Uh, production is not going to give us a lot of merchants there, but it can give us a couple of merchants here, and we need shields and stone. So, let's get a faith um, while we're at it, and a shield, a stone, and a gold. Gold, shield, stone. Let's do it. The gold I'm probably going to leave up there. I don't think we're going to need it, but we're going to put these down here because I'm going to want to build those a little bit, and then back to player one. All right, what do we want to do? Well, now we want to get a level two blue. We need five gold. We have things that produce gold. We need, we need stone like nobody's business. All right, so we're going hard after stone here. Um, I got to get two yellow still, man. Okay. We need stone for that yellow. Gonna be tough. All right. Well, let's let's get. We can get. We can get. We can use stone. We can use uh, coins. We can use shields. So, stone coins and shields. Uh, this is a coin shield. I really want the stone the most. That gives me a merchant too. I don't really want the merchant. So I think I'm gonna go here and get a stone and a shield uh, for that production round. We'll put those there, and then over to this player. Uh, he is, man, he really wants that purple to get that second leader in. Uh, we need, what was it, shields and stone. Where can we get the most here? And we need two of each. We don't need gold. That is something we don't need. We're probably going to have to give up something. Uh, if we're producing there, hmm. and gold's not going to produce anything for us, unfortunately. 
So we're going to go this route, and we're going to go stone and shield, and we would get a gold, but we don't have a place to store the gold because you're not allowed to store in the same level two different items. So we're just going to leave that gold in supply. We won't take it. It's our first kind of loss of the game. Uh, all right, so this player, uh, board one, what is he? What does he want to do? He's going hard after the level two wants to get stuff to produce. So we want stone. Unfortunately, they took that stone that was there. That was uh, not fun. So we're gonna go ahead. Man, I'm probably gonna end up losing something eventually. Uh, but I want the shields as well, so I'm going to go here and get a merchant, a shield, and a stone, which currently I can just move these around and still store them. We'll put the merchant up here and that there, and then we'll go to player two. Um, does he need three of something? If he get three shields, that would benefit him. That would give him a little bit more production. Uh, on the other hand, if he produced now, he could produce here and here, which also wouldn't hurt. So actually, he's gonna he's gonna take a loss to some degree, not be able to produce on everything, and he's gonna produce on card one and card three, and that's gonna give a merchant a gold and a stone, and then another gold merchant and shield. And those are going to go in the storage box, so that cleans up his uh, other area here. And it's going to free him up to then get a, uh, what's he trying to get? A purple? I think he can afford the purple. Oh, one merchant short of getting that purple. Hmm. So close. So close. Okay. All right. So back over here to... Uh, Board one, does he want to produce yet? Really would like to have another stone. Man, it's going to cost a little bit to get that stone. I could produce here now. And we are trying to get that level two. We need the merchants. Man, producing two stone would be beneficial. Can I get a faith? You know what? What we're going to do is we're going to go get one stone and we get one faith. So now the faith marker is inside the Vatican report area. We're going to shift. We're going to readjust our resources. And what that means is player two is like, uh-oh, I better get my faith up pretty soon or I'm going to be, you know, in a bad place. So moving on to player two. Uh, player two is so close. One more of these guys. Now, he could produce and use resources from storage. That would be that would be an option. That would give him some, but he, he would use a merchant. I don't think he wants. He could gain a merchant because he doesn't need stone. So I think what we will do is, in fact... Um, pay, we're going to produce, and we will pay two stone to gain uh, a merchant, a coin, and that. So we are doing the production action, so we can get those in our storage box. And that will give us enough next turn for what we're trying to do. Alright, so, now... Player one's going to produce, and so he's going to use a stone and a shield on that one, and then two stone on that one. Doesn't have a coin for the last one. May end up using these two. We'll see. I uh, don't know if he wants to. So he's producing on card one and card two. Uh, that's going to give him two merchants and one faith. So that's moving that along, and that's going to give him two coins and two faith. One, two. Ah, and so the Vatican report is triggered, which means he's going to get to turn that over. He's not in this area up here that's kind of outlined, so his just comes off the board. He will not get points for that. Um, so now he's going to be ch chasing after that, or 
probably what player two is going to start trying to do is, hey, i got to end the game so I can get this guy in play and get as many points as possible before his faith gets up too much higher. All right, so that's done. And did he want to turn these in for anything else? His goal is to get the level two blue and put it on this. Does he want to do that yet? Um, he needs five gold. Yeah, putting these two in a position to get gold. Uh, getting gold as fast as possible is just good. So he's going to do that. All right. Now player two has a little bit more focus than he did before at trying to finish this game. He wants that purple card. He's got three of these and two gold. So he's going to do that and he's going to grab this purple card and put it on there. And that gives him this leader at the end of his turn. So that's eight points. And he has one, two, three, four, five in his tableau. Two more cards and the game is over. All right. So player one is thinking, hey, I have got to get faith out there. Um, I want to get this out there so I can even produce more faith. We really want that card. So we're going to need some uh, stone to do that. Uh, no yellow card, but probably, probably going to just give up this card. Uh, one of the things you can do in the game is discard a leader from your hand and get one faith. So he's going to do that as a free action. And he's just going to go after this leader, which uh, he needs. He needs that blue. He needs to produce here. He needs stone. And he's going to go here and get a stone, um, um, a shield. Yeah, stone, a shield, and one faith. So we're just going to try to cruise down this faith track just as fast as we can. All right, player two, wanting to get these cards going. He needs a level two card for here or a level three card. Produces a lot of stone, uh, which is helpful, and can use gold to produce one of anything and a faith, so that's not bad. Might keep us kind of in the faith game, but not real strong. Uh, let's see. So we need shields, merchants. Hmm. Uh, so getting cards is going to be our opportunity to win. And we need a level two card. In some ways, I think producing them as many resources as possible is going to get us there. But uh, we only need one more shield to uh, produce to get this card. So... Let's get some shields. And can we get a shield and a faith? We can't because a shield is out of the thing. Uh, what's going to give us the most stuff? Let's get a shield, a gold, and a merchant. We'll do that. So we're going to move our gold to level two. We'll put our shield up there and we'll put this there. And we'll see what we can do next turn. All right. Uh, player one. Doesn't have only four cards in Tableau. Kind of want to get this leader out. We need five gold. We're going to go ahead and produce. So with these two, uh, we're going to get two coins and we're going to get two faith. One, two. Uh, because we really want to channel our faith. I could spend a coin for another uh, two shields, but I don't want to. I can't spend. I didn't have the extra there to spend anything. And I could turn something, but I really don't want to. I'm really wanting to go heavy after that. All right. So now it is player uh, two's turn. Um, he, man, he wants to finish this game. He wants to get this to end. So he's going to pay one, two, three gold and three shields. And he's going to grab this level two and put it on that. And now he's got close to some good production here. Um, he needs a couple of merchants and a shield. And we might be in good shape for some heavy production. Uh, but we need to get... Now, now we're going... We are definitely going after a card three. It's just a matter of what we're going to get. We get lots of stone. We get lots of shields. So probably this one or this one. One of those two. And if we can keep faith going up a little bit, not bad. All right. So back to player one. Player one. He's, he's going after it. 
He's going to pay all five of his gold. He's going to get this, this one, and he's going to put that in his tableau. And then this leader is now an active leader for him. He can pay a merchant for anything and a faith. Lots of stuff to get faith. So he player one is not going after cards. Player one is full on going after faith. And his goal is to try to at least trigger this once with all of these resources, hopefully before the end of the game, so that he can get all of these things. So he needs two more stone, three, three stone and a shield, and he'll be able to trigger all the things, including his uh his guy here he actually needs another merchant three stone a shield and a merchant well he has the shield he has two merchants so he only needs one merchant two stone three stone one merchant and three stone and he's golden okay <clears throat> player two really needs to ratchet up this so he's he, he's got the ability to produce on two things he's going to go ahead and pay to do his production action here because he is on the verge of getting enough resources to do something. That's going to give him two shields in the faith, and that'll give him three shields. And he is one shield away from being able to purchase that guy. So this is this is almost game over. I think we might even be able to finish this game. So you actually get to see a whole game, I think. Um, I thought it was going to be... I didn't realize how fast it would come after getting the tableau to the, the point it's at. All right, so he, I mean, he wants to get, uh, he, he's going to go after this. He's going to go two uh, and, a, and, a, and a stone and at least get that going here. Oh, those go up here and that goes there. And then player uh, two, uh, now he would have looked at his board and seen he didn't have enough, but knows that he's probably going after that because he's got six cards here, he is going to try to finish the game very quickly. So the question is, does he go after a resource here, or does he try to produce and do something that way? Well, getting the resource here makes the most sense. So um, he is going to he's going to go this way out and get two merchants and a shield, and that might be... So player one knows that if player two buys that card next next game, that's game over. So player two has got to make a player one's got to make a decision. Do I produce now or do I try to stretch it out one more turn in case he doesn't go for that? Well, player one knows player two is really trying to end this game. So we're gonna see how much how much stuff can we produce. We could do that. We could do that. Um, we could do that. And then the only one we wouldn't produce is this. <clears throat> Which is not as good, but it is good enough. So we're going to pay, we're going to produce, we're going to pay a merchant. We get one of any other resource. On the off chance, we get another, another day to, uh, uh, live and do another turn. We're going to do that, but we are going to get a faith. Uh, we're going to pay these two resources which give us two more merchants and one more faith. And we're going to pay these two, and that's going to give us two shields and two faith. And guess what? That triggers a Vatican report, which is going to give me points here. And he is not going to get those points. And that is going to, that's that for him. So now it's player two's turn. He is going to pay all six of his shields, and he is going to end the game. Now, I wasn't being like a true mathematician here. Player two probably would have counted the points and said, eh, should I end the game now or not? I didn't, I didn't calculate this to see if it would, in fact, get him the win. So we'll see. Uh, that probably a more competitive player would see if they could hash out a win somehow by maybe angling for some more cards or some higher point cards. Uh, something of that nature. All right. Um, so now, end game, you just count points. It's that easy. Uh, you look at the cards in the tableau. We've got four. Uh, that's 11, 12, 13, uh, 22, uh, plus five is uh, 27, plus nine, because of the faith track, is 36. 7, 8, 9, 4. So we got 40 
player one got 40. And then player two, uh, only one for fate, but 17, 18, 19, 20, uh, 29, 30, uh, 29, 37, uh, 38, plus uh, 12, 48, Grind 50. So player two actually won the game because of cards. They got their leader up there that they wanted to get out there. They got this leader out there as well. And they played enough cards to get points off of that so that the faith track didn't actually win the game in this case. Uh, even though player one had more in the faith category, uh, they probably played more efficiently with their cards, but they didn't quite get enough to get it. So 4250, uh, player one to player two. If you saw me make mistakes, uh, definitely call that out if you played this game and you know how it works. But that is Masters of Renaissance. What do I think of this game? Um, having played a I really want to play it with players. I really want to see how it works. Sometimes playing two-handed like this, it's often challenging to... Uh, you know, would I have made certain decisions because it's hard to get out of my head what one, one hand is doing versus the other? So that's a factor. Um, it's a pretty, it's, it's very fast. And actually playing this time through, I found that this was faster than I would have thought it. Because really, getting seven cards in your tableau, if you're fairly efficient then it's not going to take too long to do that. Um, I think that is probably the most likely the way that the game ends when I played uh, a four-handed play before this one. And uh, I was that was what ended the game, was someone's tableau was full. And I, But I can see where if people, if you have all the players are chasing after faith and trying to get points that way, you certainly could end up in a situation where people are trying to keep their tableau small before they build it out. So there you go. Thanks for joining me on Game Thoughts. Have a great rest of your day.